House of the Real Water Cooler Talk Shows on YouTube. I am Trevor, joined by just Matt Myers tonight. Matt Madrid is away, but sending his good wishes. Uh, Texas just played. Colorado State looked dominant, looked every bit the part of a top top five team. And Texas heads to Ann Arbor this coming weekend to take on the Wolverines in a top 10 matchup that should be very exciting, one that's been on the calendar for a while. Uh, pretty much ever since the matchup was was set. So um, we're going to start the show off breaking down the Colorado State game. A lot of good things to take away from it. And then we'll transition over into the Michigan preview from there. Uh, but before we get into it, please like, comment, subscribe, all the usual. We do appreciate it. Season's back, so we're going to try doing a little bit more consistent videos here while we can, especially for the big games like this one. So Myers, how are you doing? You were at the game. Kind of walk me through your opening thoughts and what it was like just being back in DKR. Yeah, it was great. It was great to be back. Of course, I live for games in DKR on Saturdays in the fall, and it was great. And uh, Honestly, it was just so nice to watch our football team. I, I really haven't been so just – impressed with how thorough and complete of a game our teams played even against cupcakes i know colorado state's not the greatest team but they're also not fcs they're not some of these other cupcakes that sec teams were playing week one and the fact that all three phases of the game we played so well and um just a lot of promise from the young guys just we looked disciplined for the most part fast it was just overall i was it, it surpassed my expectations i expected more jitters out of the gate from this team yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, that was that was really what stood out to me. And and when we get to Michigan here a little bit later, um, I'll kind of share my thoughts as to why I'm kind of changing my mind. I, I don't know if you saw in the last video. I I wasn't there for it, but my I predicted that one of the Texas's losses for the year would come in the Michigan game, and I'm I'm feeling um, a little bit differently now. And, and a big part of that is just how cohesive our team looked. Um, considering how many new transfers have come into this team and, um, you know, with Cedric Baxter going down and Jaden Blue having to be the main running back and, um, you know, having to rely on Wisner a lot more than he's ever been relied on. And, you know, of course, breaking in um, Gibson, you know, I there were just a lot of changes and newness to this team that I wasn't sure. I knew it was going to be good and very talented, but beginning of the year, you know, you're kind of working things out. Um, but for the most part, you know, first quarter was a little, little slow, but as soon as the second quarter came around, uh, Texas was really looking very effortless. Quinn was looking fantastic. Of course, Arch comes in, looks fantastic. Offensive line was doing a pretty good job with pass production. I feel like, um, for a majority of the game, um, defense looked the best that I've seen it in a long time. Um, just very cohesive, um, very complete unit, yeah, very different from other defensive units that I think we've seen in the in recent history, just being that um, the tackling was really sound. Everyone looked to be on the same page. It just looked very buttoned up. Um, you know, game one, I, I don't feel like I saw a lot of particular players flash on defense. I mean, of course, you know, Jade Barron gets a big interception and um, – I mean, our secondary, we will get into the secondary. I think our secondary did flash. I take that back. But regardless, it was a very cohesive performance all around and um, just very impressed with with how we came out, um, especially in a game that we could very easily be looking ahead to Michigan. Um, we we were not doing that. Um, granted, as soon as the game was over, you know, there were reports that the players were already moved on pretty quick and really were focused on that. But um, it seems like a very veteran team. And again, you know, transfer portal, it is very veteran. So it can go one of two ways. It could be like, okay, it's a bunch of new guys playing together. The chemistry isn't there. They're still figuring out who's the leader, all that kind of stuff, getting on the same page. Or it could be the opposite where it's like, okay, now we, it's just a very veteran team and they know what they're doing. <laughs> and it seems to be more of the latter, um, which is, of course, what you want and, uh, you know, that's great news. So those are kind of my opening thoughts. Um, let's go into a little bit more specifics. 
Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I think for me, I was more impressed with the defensive performance than the offense because, you know, under Shark, we're going to have a good offense every year, especially this year just with the um, the amount of talent we brought back on the line at quarterback, at running back, and then the receiver receivers we brought in on this offseason. Uh, it's it, it was just so impressive how our defense – not not just the starters, like we played a bunch of players and they all looked pretty, like you said, buttoned up, just swarming. They played at a different speed with a different physicality. Um, there were there were some runs that got a little loose, but I think that was like by design, not by design necessarily, but I think the game plan was focused on giving up the run game and not letting them pass on us like they like to do because it's like an air raid attack typically for Colorado State and they weren't able to pass at all. On our secondary, which was our Achilles heel last year, I thought Gavin Holmes played really well. Uh, obviously, Manny Muhammad didn't get targeted much, but when he did, he was nails. He made some big tackles too. And uh, Michael Taft looked great. Yeah. Uh, Jade, of course, uh, probably our highest IQ football player we have. It's it's so nice having him on the back end. That was a really savvy play on the interception. Uh, but then, yeah, like Wardell Matt comes in late and has like a Michael Griffin esque toe tap interception to preserve the shutout uh there's a lot of guys flying around makuba i thought played pretty well apparently gilbo was like the highest graded defender yeah, one of them i didn't even i don't even notice gilbo so it's just guys everywhere making plays and then the linebacker level i mean benda man benda looks good he looks like devin white out there he's just plays so fast and with such physicality uh it's it's fun to watch him and ant hill swarm to the ball uh blackwell got in there too maurice blackwell he you know, he's cut from the same cloth. Same with Leona LaFau. I was impressed with number 18. So our four linebackers deep uh, played really well, I thought, which is encouraging. So I didn't know if it'd be a big drop off, but I didn't notice one. I mean, obviously, Anthony Hill's special. No one's going to be as good as that quite. But everybody else looked really good in the linebacker room. And D-line, um, I guess that's the one that had a little bit less to be desired. Um, but I just think, like I said, matchup wise, it was kind of a, a tricky trick. It's you're not going to get many sacks on a quick air raid offense that's just predicated on getting the ball out, and they didn't even pass that much to begin with. They were just running the ball, so we didn't get to see those new edges. You know, Colin Simmons and Trey Moore really get to the quarterback, but Colin Simmons did make some plays uh, away, like away from the away from the quarterback. You know, like in, in the uh, second level, he had some good tackles. So. Overall, I was really happy with the defense and just a lot of a lot of bodies went into that game, especially on the D-line. So I'm kind of curious how it's going to uh, look going forward in terms of the rotation, because I would imagine it's going to get compressed a little bit in terms of like finding, you know, the five or six guys that we really like on the D-line. Uh, but maybe we rotate like this all year. It'll be fun to watch. But yeah, the defense stood out to me. Offense was great as well. Quinn looked good. Um and the receiver room is as advertised, maybe even better. Matt Golden, like we said a long time ago, people kind of – during fall camp, people were kind of dating Matt Golden. And uh, all of a sudden, it looks like him and Bolt and Bond are one and two. I know it's it's going to be week to week. I mean, Ryan Wingo looked great too. There's so many talented guys in that room. But it's just so encouraging to see, like, we can beat you with a different receiver every week. It seems like they're all, they're all good. Jonte made some plays, so – I was I was thrilled with the receiver room, especially just coming off of Mitchell and Worthy. It, you, you just don't know, but I feel a lot better about it now going into week two after seeing how good they looked against Colorado State. Yeah, all very good things. Um, I was also just really impressed with our ability to convert on th- third down and even outside of that, stay ahead of the chains. I, I, I think we only punted one time all game, which is yeah. – pretty absurd um i actually kind of <laughs> actually kind of wanted at the end when when sark went for it on fourth down with arch manning i think just to give manning some practice i was like we should give this punter some reps like yeah <laughs> he's new you know and he's going into the big house next week um so special teams you know looked good from what we saw but we didn't see much we didn't have to um so uh, very impressed with how you know quinn looked that that no look type of pass that he threw was pretty impressive um he threw a really really nice pass to uh um who was it was it golden i believe out into the corner of the end zone it's yeah. kind of funny my my dad criticized that pass quite a bit he was like oh if the the 
the defensive back just turned around, it would have been an interception. I'm like, no, that was like <laughs> textbook perfect. He hit this teeny window, but anyway, um, I don't know. I, I I think he just had a really great performance, and then of course Arch comes in, lights it up immediately. First 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 play. I'm like totally expecting a run. I'm like, all right, they're they're gonna give this guy, you know, just hand off the ball a few times and then, you know, try a pretty basic, you know, basic pass. But no, you know, he he keeps the ball, turns around, scrambles around a bit, and then throws a dart to to cook like right up the middle through all these defenders and gets them down into the red zone. And then from there does that, you know, super again on the fly shovel pass um, to Bolden for the touchdown. Um, this guy just really, his, his mobility is something that's just his ability to throw on the, throw on the run just really stood out to me. Um, it, Quinn's a little bit different than that. I know Quinn can't throw on the run, but I don't know this guy. Ar- Arch is different. Uh, still not our starter, still very pro Quinn. We're going to ride with Quinn, but the future mm-hmm. looks very bright at the, at the, at the quarterback position. And, um, it's great to have a good backup that I think most people he'd be starting at pretty much every other school outside of not like three, you know, only a couple, I feel like out there. So all in all, very impressed with, with everyone. Receivers all looked very, very good. I'm very happy to hear that Jaden blue did not get injured. It was just cramps from what I heard. Um, Cause that was scary. <laughs> see him go down it's like no you know but like i said trey weisner or quit trey beyond whatever whatever he's going by these days um <laughs> weisner looked pretty pretty solid uh a lot of speed a lot of speed in our running back room and then gibson definitely provided a little bit more of the boom um i'm curious to see how how that works throughout the year Jaden did look a lot thicker build so i think he'll kind of be our main guy not only with everything but um in some of the heavier set packages i see blue probably still being that guy um i think blue's got a shot at winning the dope like uh, i just really think that sark's gonna rely very heavily on 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 blue and he should blue's really good um i just see a lot of reps in his future and i'm i'm glad that knock on wood he continues to be healthy so um, and yeah, and Gibson looked real good. It's still a little early to tell. It's Colorado State in the second half of that game, you know. It's a little bit different. Um, he kind of reminded me a bit of Roshan, uh, just his running style. Ran a little high and pretty powerful. It's not as big as Roshan, but I don't know. He I felt I felt shades of Roshan in, in Gibson's play. So all in all, good. Any other Colorado State thoughts? Yeah, just a couple things. Those are good points. I do like how you're having up Jaden Blue because, like you said, I think you texted this in the group text, and I agree that he runs a lot like B. Not B. I mean, like Jonathan Brooks in the sense that he just oh, makes yeah. it. Easy. He's just able to dispose of defenders so easily, just effortlessly, just gets by people, and um, it's like always. If there's a guy in the open field, he's going to make the first one miss. That's what it seems like, at least so far, with Jaden Blue. He's just so quick. Um, and it's kind of got that lineage that Bijan and Bro- and Brooks had, and he's kind of just got that same – it makes it look easy. And um, I'll, I'll comment on Arch real fast, and then uh, we can wrap up Colorado State. Arch just makes it – Arch just is so fluid back there, and he's so decisive. On his first play where he threw it to Jonte – he went through like three different reads, I want to say, before he found John yeah. saying that over to strike. And he's just – you can tell he's got that IQ, that football manning IQ that not every quarterback's born with. And um, it shows. And then you pair that with his athleticism that I know Peyton and Eli definitely did not have. It, it's just really exciting. And he's just got a great pocket presence. I mean, on that touchdown to Silas Bolden, Quinn takes a sack there, does something crazy, probably. I, he, I know he doesn't do what Arch did. And, and not to say – Arch is better because there's things that Quinn does better than Arch, but plays like that are just like you just kind of just say, "Wow, like this dude's this dude's talented." So yeah, it's just so exciting uh, to see where the future will go with Arch, and it's nice to have that in the back of our mind. You know, if Quinn takes a big hit Saturday and we have to send an Arch, 
I think uh, we can operate at a high level. But uh, yeah, last thing I'll say about this Colorado State game, uh, one of our biggest weaknesses last year was scoring in the red zone. And I think we scored every time we got into the red zone mm-hmm. this year, like pretty effortlessly. Like it, it felt like as we got closer to the end zone, like the field got more open, which is like usually the opposite of how it works. So that was really encouraging to see. Uh, I like how we were able to get, you know, pass, like passing touchdowns in the red zone because we're trying to figure out who our guy's going to be with A.D. Mitchell gone, who, who's going to be our target, you know, on third and third and ten at the goal line. Uh, it looked like Golden can be that for us. Bond made a nice. I know, I know he was open, but Bond had a nice goal line touchdown pass too. So it's just it's a, very encouraging to see. You know, two of our major issues last year addressed so so strongly in week one with our secondary playing lights out, only like fifty something passing yards given up against the formidable passing attack, and our red zone offense taking such a massive step forward in week one. So. Um, that's things that you want to see, and uh, they definitely got an A plus on both of those, and both of those in week one. So hopefully they can keep it going this week. It's a lot tougher, tougher challenge for sure. Yeah, exciting challenge because you know if Texas continues to show that you know week one wasn't just playing a weak team, and uh, we both agree that Colorado State, you know, I think that's a bowl game. They're going to make a bowl game. I, I don't think that was a horrible team. We made them look horrible. And it's kind of funny. I was watching, you know, watching the game with a few people and they're like, wow, Colorado State is so bad. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, but we're <laughs> we're also looking really good, too. Like yeah. we made them look bad. Um, and like you said, you know, it's it's impressive that we, you know, it wasn't quite Georgia level where they were like, you know, killing Clemson or anything like that. But, you know, compared to a few other, you know top 10 schools that played, you know, not very difficult matchups like Akron or whoever Ole Miss played, <laughs> you know, Vermin. Um, Vermin or yeah, exact Vermin. Yeah. Um, it's way more impressive than that. So um, hope that we can continue to build on it. I think um, beating Michigan on the road will definitely probably, probably move us up a spot um, into sure. the top two be my guess. So, if it's if it's good enough um but yeah let's go ahead let's move on to michigan um myers i'll hand it back to you to kind of begin our breakdown of this game um texas goes in line has shifted a bit started out a lot more narrow now it's getting up to almost a touchdown in texas's favor with the over under being uh right around the 45 point line um so they expect you know kind of an average mid twenties scoring game, uh, Texas winning by a touchdown. Um, kind of give us your opening breakdown of uh, what Michigan is, you know, now that they won the title, they lost a lot of talent. They're kind of in a bit of a new rebuilding, not, not rebuilding, but I don't know their identities. They're trying to figure stuff out from what, from what I gathered from watching the highlights of their, their game last week. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, there's there's two there's two sides of the story. If you look at Michigan, uh, they were national champions last year. They were great. The strength of that team was their defense, and they returned a lot, most of that defense. They got Will Johnson back, Kenneth Grant, Mason Graham. Probably kind of like Texas was last year with Sweat and Murphy on the D-line. That's what they are this year with uh, Grant and, and, uh, and Mason Graham. So those are, those are some real players. They got really good secondary. A lot of experience there. Uh, but if you go on the offensive side of the ball, they have a whole new O-line that they were breaking in. Uh, they lost a lot of players last year to the draft. And their O-line looked really suspect in week one. I mean, th- there's no – Michigan fans will tell you that. It did not look pretty at times. Fresno State, similar to Colorado State's a pretty good team. Maybe even better than Colorado State. So it's not your typical cupcake. Like, that's a deceptively tougher opener. So I guess the close game – it can kind of be validated in some ways, but they still returned Donovan Edwards on offense. They still got Colston Loveland, I want to say, that good tight end. But the their issue, I think the biggest issue on their team right now is Alex Orgy and Davis Warren are their quarterbacks. And apparently mm-hmm. Davis Warren beat him out, the, the walk-on Davis Warren. Um, and they played. They both played against Fresno State, but neither of them looked great. I mean, Warren looked a little bit better, I think, but that's just like – 
that, like that's where we're going to win the game. I think is taking advantage of the inexperienced, honestly unproven, not that talented, at least at this point, quarterbacks. I want to say. So that's that's where I'm circling. They're also breaking in a whole new defensive coordinator, like a lot of coaching coaching turnover because of Harbaugh leaving. So defensively, they're going to create a bunch of problems for us. I mean, they they kind of stifled Washington's prolific offense last year. I mean, they definitely stifled it in the national championship, and a lot of those cats are back this year. So if there's a defense going to sh- slow down our offense, it's going to be Michigan's defense. But on the – on the same token, if there's an offense that's going to score all over Michigan, it's going to be our offense because we have a lot of talent at receiver, just a lot of speed across the board, experienced quarterbacks, experienced O-line. So it's kind of our offense versus their defense. That's the matchup that'll definitely – whoever wins that's winning, winning the game for sure. So looking forward to it. Yeah. I mean, kind of, yeah. You you hit the nail on the head. The, the quarterback inexperience is very – is a blatant thing to me. Um, I don't think they ran, you know, the ball as good as what I anticipated, <laughs> you know, against um, against Fresno State, uh, which also surprised me. Um, I'm really curious to see if if the reflections of that game were just week one. They're looking ahead to Texas, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, you know players that left the team that maybe they don't quite have the level of leadership, at least on the offensive side of the ball that they did last year, which I'm, I'm sure is the case um, at least partially. Um, I'm curious if this is like a reflection of them when coming into this game or, or if that was just kind of a, you know, sloppy first game looking ahead, they're going to button it all up for, for Texas. My guess would be that. Um, that, you know, this is going to be a different team than what we saw last week. Um, but I don't know for sure either, because it is a lot of change for Michigan. And then of course, you know, the coaching staff, um, um, you know, with Harbaugh gone, you know, he was such a, you know, face of that program that, you know, even though a lot of that staff kind of remains put, uh, there's a lot of turnover there. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm curious to see what kind of a team Michigan presents, um, in this and kind of how they come out. Uh, like you said, their defense will be Texas's biggest challenge. Um, and let, you know what, let's, let's transition into that. Cause I, I do want to hear your thoughts before I keep rambling here, but, um, Let's talk about, I guess, kind of keys to the game and kind of where you would anticipate um, Texas or Michigan to have the have the edges in this matchup. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear they're going to try to run the ball on us, like t- until it goes out of style. I don't think they're going to pass much at all because they know they're going to have issues passing on us downfield. I mean, um, unless Orgy or Warren becomes really good overnight, that's going to be a problem for them. And they can run on us. I mean, you hypothetically, they should – like, that was our weakness, I would say, week one, was our interior D-line. They have a great running back, Donovan Edwards. And I know their O-line didn't open up great run lanes week one, but I'd imagine they'd take a step forward in week two, um, even if it's against a better opponent. So I think that's going to be their – that's their identity anyways. They're a run-first team. So that's a, that's a key, uh, key to the game is, you know, just keeping those runs – you know, not beyond three or four yards of carry because that's when it gets that's when it gets dicey. There were some that opened up against Colorado State that were a little uncomfortable that a better back like Donovan Edwards could turn those into 15, 20 yard, 30 yard gains. So that's a key. Um another key is I think you want to challenge the secondary. I I just I I think Will Johnson's great, probably the best DB in the in the country, but I, I think there's still like just the amount of depth and speed we have across the board there's going to be mismatches yeah. and Quinn to find them um we need quinn to find them but i i just think you test these guys downfield i don't think we're able to run on their d line super well i don't unless we play out of our minds like we did at alabama where we kind of moved around that d line pretty well um which is possible i mean i don't want to write off our o-line we got a bunch of grown men there but i think we're going to have more success through the air in this matchup so we need a good Quinn game, of course, and I think he will have a good game. I mean, he looked great, I thought, week one, besides that one pick he threw. Um, 
So good Quinn game and, and attack him downfield. And, um, you know, Gunnar Helm at tight end, he's a sneaky good receiver. So there's just a lot, a lot we can do, I think, to um, really just make their secondary uncomfortable and just Sark's going to be creative this game for sure. You know, he held a lot back week one. So we're going to see some fun formations and plays up his sleeve that he's saved all off season. I'm imagining. Yeah, that that's I agree with pretty much all that. Um, our wide receivers, I think, definitely have a bit of an edge. I know that their secondary is good, like you just said, um, but the depth of this group is insane. <laughs> yeah, to put it lightly, um, and there's gonna be yeah, like you said, there's absolutely gonna be mismatches and. Even if Michigan comes out and plays a really great game defensively and kind of locks down our receivers, at some point there's going to be a break, you know, um, where guys get open. Um, you know, I've heard the argument kind of in the favor of Michigan that, like, oh, Texas may be so focused on stopping the run that they're going to, you know, their secondary is going to sleep a little bit and, you know, Michigan will be able to find a guy deep or something like that. And that'll be a, you know, a big point of the game. And and, and that could certainly happen. Um, I feel really good about our secondary, at least based on the first game, it's a little bit early still, but, um, you know, I, I think that, uh, that if we just continue to keep, you know, passing the ball and looking for the open man, I think that we're going to be able to get down the field pretty easily. Um, our line's got to play really really good game like you said a la bama last year um i think that that's very important quinn has got to eliminate that interception play a very clean game i i trust him i feel like he's very good in big games at not turning the ball over um that is one thing that quinn is pretty good at i i think the interception last week was a bit in uncharacteristic of him just seemed sloppy and dumb um trying to make something happen uh got a little greedy um so i think if we do those things uh texas should have their way in putting up points and you know for michigan their biggest concern i think is will they be able to match our point scoring um and i don't know if they will i, I really don't um i think they'll be able to move the ball and control the clock in certain points of the game but it, when it comes to moving it enough to generate points. Um, I'm not sure if they can, they can match uh, what we can do on a very quick notice. And um, just given our receiver depth I, I, is really kind of a, a big separator for me, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree a thousand percent. And, um, but like, what an opportunity this is for Texas. I mean, you're playing the champs in their house coming off like a 16 game winning streak in the big house. I mean, that's what it's all about right here. And, and honestly, it's kind of concerning now that everybody and their mothers picking Texas, like <laughs> every podcast I've seen Texas wins. A lot of people are saying Texas wins comfortably. Um, so this will be a good test for the me mental makeup of our team. Cause I really do love, you know, just the, the sound bites you hear out of Sark and the players that this team just seems so mature and yeah, so thank you. pro pro like if they're like, they're like robotic, honestly. Like they, they're just so bought in. It seems like, at least from like the leaders you hear being interviewed, like they were focused on Michigan. Like as soon as that game went to zero Saturday, and Jade Barron is like watching film all night. He said today, and he's just, and like they truly just are so bought into the culture, and it's it's so exciting. And so that's that gives me a lot of optimism. Sark said this is the closest team he's ever had, and. That, that's closer than last year, I'm guessing, if he's saying this is the best, closest cultural team he's ever had. Yeah. Um, and going to an environment like that, it, it, I'm sure it'll be – it's definitely a sellout. I'm sure it'll be an electric, hostile environment. I know it's big noon, but uh, they're used to playing big-time noon games there. They play Ohio State at noon every year there, so it'll be turned up. Uh, and if you win this game, man, you're so – you're sitting real pretty. You're going to be like a top-two team with a, a nice little runway till OU – and then if you get through that, you get Georgia coming to your house at probably five, six, and I mean that's way down the line. But basically, yeah. you, this game you're sitting in a wonderful spot. And the good thing about it is if you if you do drop this game somehow, um, 
everything's still out there technically with the 12 team playoff and the conference auto bid and you know the at larges can probably have up to two losses so it's 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 kind of nice in that sense it's not like a live or die like in, in years past especially in the bcs if you lose this game like i'm i'm on i'm just depressed like it's over like the season's a wash essentially but now it's kind of like let's just see what we can do um a little the pressure's off i would say and just let's just go just go beat the champs in their house on prime time i mean game day's there josh pate's gonna be there so it's gonna be it's gonna be a beautiful beautiful uh beautiful uniform matchup so it's gonna be awesome i can't wait yeah and you'll be there yeah absolutely i got got my lodging situation set up we're gonna buy the tickets sometime this week but yeah me and about three uh, three or four of my buddies so it should be hopefully a lot of longhorn fans make the trip i think i think we'll we travel pretty well generally, so I think it'll be a good turnout. <laughs> it'll be great. It'll be great. All right. Oh, yeah. Ready for predictions? Yeah, let's do it. Who wants to lead it off? How about how about us since Madrid couldn't make it, he was able to send a prediction. Let's 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 read his off. Yeah. Do um, you want to or me? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, there I mean. You go. All right, he's picking the Longhorns. He's going. He's going with the masses. He says Texas wins thirty-one twenty-seven. I don't know if he elaborated on it more than that, but that is a score prediction. Um, I think in the offseason he also predicted Texas to win this game. He did. So, yeah, which kind of hopefully. surprises me. I would have thought he felt more confident about this game, but because he seems really confident in his uh, season predictions. But yeah, for sure. But yeah. he's got the horns. Okay. Uh, I can, I'll, I'll go i'll go next um okay. so i feel bad i feel like we're riding off michigan too early uh, I, I had a funny feeling about this game all off season and i still do have this kind of funny but but man i, I just watched them against fresno state and i know i know that they, they it's week one it's fresno state it doesn't mean that much honestly they kind of sputtered out of the gate last year as well against bowling green i want to say they kind of just look sloppy in week one. So I expect a whole different team, a much tougher challenge. But I just I just can't pick against the group of veterans we have right now. I know – and Michigan's riding high off that natty. They kind of been to the mountaintop already. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, the Michigan fans I've talked to have literally told me this. I doubt the players feel this way, but they've said this year is just house money. I'm I'm riding that natty for a couple of years uh he's like i'm content right now and and i think that that means something i, I at like at least maybe at a subconscious level i think texas is just um very dialed in right now and um uh, just the it's just a good matchup for us i think i think we're getting them at the right time straight straight off them losing every everybody on offense their whole coaching staff uh new defensive coordinator i know it's on the road that's tough but i got texas winning i have this sounds bad. I have Texas winning 31 to 17. And okay. I expect it to be a very close game, but I think maybe late we pull away with a yeah. like an AD Mitchell bomb. Or, you know, not AD Mitchell, but like we had in Tuscaloosa, you know, it's kind of pull away in the fourth quarter. Yeah. To uh, win win by double digits. Myers, I am totally in alignment with you, uh, with pretty much everything you just said. Um, my prediction is Texas wins 35-21, so by two touchdowns. Um, that was not what I predicted. You know, I had Texas losing to Michigan in the big house. Um, really, my what, what changed my mind was week one, seeing what Michigan did and seeing what Texas did. Uh, Texas uh, reassured a lot of the questions that I had going into this game about, you know, all the different new players and how they were going to mesh. And um, they all sounded very veteran and very mature, but it's one thing to say it. It's another to show it with, um, with your actions and, and gameplay. And uh, Texas really impressed and continues to be saying the right things and doing the right things. Um, and like you said, I, I, that, that same point can be put on Michigan. I don't know if Michigan, I think Michigan's figuring themselves out at this point compared to what Texas is um which is understandable they lost talent you know that argument could be used either way um so i don't know i think not only is it a favorable matchup um but this texas team really did impress and really looks incredibly deep and michigan i mean at the end of the day whenever it comes down to a matchup whenever it's a close game or a toss-up or big matchup like this 
the quarterback position does matter a lot. And Quinn, to me, is head and shoulders uh, above the quarterbacks that Michigan's going to be putting out there. So I I think we're going to be able to put up a good number of points on them. Um, and I don't know if it'll so much be our defense shutting them down as it is just them struggling to continue to figure out how to how to score points in general. Um, just their play style versus ours, um, I think will prove to be kind of unfavorable to them. And I don't know. Yeah. I just, I feel good about our team. Uh, I, yeah. I really do. Probably the best I've felt about our team and in recent history. So. Right. It's nice. It's nice to, to trust a team because we've been so battered yeah. and hated right. over the years and, and um, it's just, yeah, it's a team that you, that's veteran and you trust and, uh, yeah, like you said, that you hit on the nail. Like the quarterback matchup matters, and honestly, Arch Manning probably starts over there two quarterbacks they got oh, there sure. easily, probably. So, yeah, yeah it's just th- those are the areas in a game like this that you want to have the advantage, and I think Texas definitely does. So, and yeah, last thing I'll say before we get out of here is, um, I just I think back to last year and how we kind of sputtered against Rice, and then all of a sudden the following week. We were just completely buttoned up and just a new level of intensity and focus. And I and I and I trust our team to uh kind of do that again this week because there's just a mature team that I really trust. You know, it's um just the amount of veterans we have on this team, this the sound bites you hear out of them, just the things that they're just wired. They're very hungry. It's a very hungry football team. And Sark said it himself. And um Michigan is coming off a national championship. So there's a different, I feel like a different subconscious level. Maybe it's conscious of just like hunger after you've, you've been to the mountaintop opposed to Texas coming so close and then get losing to Washington, in the semifinals. So I think that's going to play a role Saturday. Um, And uh, yeah, I just, I really just like the mental makeup of our team and the way that Sark's always, bragging about this team's culture and how he's saying this is the best close knit United team he's had. So I think those are other reasons why I just, I just trust this veteran led team with Quinn Ewers and the O line and a lot of the Grinman we have on defense, like Benda, uh, Jade Barron, Broughton, Collins, Taff at this point, just a lot of people that have been around and won meaningful games and in tough places. And I think that they've been salivating at this opportunity for a while um, you know, we were focused on Colorado State, but I mean, they were also looking ahead to Michigan. I mean, Sark himself said that that a lot of the installs in fall camp were Michigan plays, but they didn't know at the time. The players didn't know, but the coaching staff definitely had this one circled uh, behind closed doors. So I think uh, it's all going to come to fruition Saturday, and I I like our chances. But then again, it's you got to beat the champs. You don't don't under, underestimate the heart of the champion and. It could get very scary um, on Saturday, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and and there is something to be said too. I, I know that you know it's a different team for us, but I bear I guarantee you a lot of the players that have continued over and from last year's team into this year's team are are thinking that this could have been the matchup for the national championship if it wasn't. I mean, there's a lot of ifs, and of course we don't want to play that game, but. You know, Texas was only one play away from winning that ball game against Washington and playing in the national title game against Michigan. So you can't say that for sure, but, you know, um, I guarantee a lot of the players that have come back uh, that didn't quite make it to that game um, are looking at Michigan as an opportunity to be like, you know what, we're going to take it to them. And granted, they're they're a very different team than what they were last year but nonetheless uh still the wolverines and uh i think that the guys have had it circled for a long time and we're just we texas has been really good in big games um we're it it's been a fortunate thing um even under previous coaching staffs i just feel like in the last few years texas um doesn't have that problem that some teams have where um they're slow to get up for the big games and texas seems to have the opposite problem at least historically where they're getting up for the big games uh maybe not quite finishing but at least getting up for them and then and then 
not getting up for the inferior teams. Last season has kind of corrected that to where Texas is now playing to their level and standard week in and week out, which is what you want um, for a good team. But nonetheless, the big games have always been one that I feel like Texas has showed up for. And I think Bama was a big confidence booster last year and a big stepping stone and they didn't quite get it done against Washington. And I guess that's the biggest game that they, you know, failed to really act on, but I don't know. I have a good feeling about this one. And uh, I didn't previously, um, not because I didn't think Texas could win, but um, just seeing how, how this past week came together and the fact that, you know, they're putting their money where their mouth is and it's not just talk. It It's, they're showing it that this team is veteran and ready to go and um, backing everything up that they say. So anything else? No, man, I, I think we all nailed it. Uh, I wish Madrid could have joined on this one. Cause I know we had some, some yeah. hot takes to spit, but we'll get him in on the next one. But yeah, man, it's exciting. This is a great opportunity. Like I said, and, uh, this is what it's all about. Hopefully, uh, I want to win so bad because I just want to, I want to get to like four and zero going to the OU game. That's always so much fun when you're undefeated going into OU yeah. or five, whatever it'll be, and um, just see where we can take it this year. Because man, this team looks great. They look really good. There's a lot of potential. It's early, of course. Things could go sideways, but uh, you know, very cautiously optimistic about the outlook of the way the season can can turn. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching and making it this far. If you did, uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe helps us out. We appreciate it. Uh, let us know your predictions below. Love to see them. And uh, horns up. We'll see how Texas does Saturday on the road to Michigan. Y'all take care.